Hello friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. This is episode number 12 in our performance testing must have skill series. In this video, we will continue to discuss some of the performance testing core concepts. If you are watching this series for the first time, please watch previous episodes of this series and continue these concepts. You can find the link to this playlist series in the description. We will begin by discussing the topics covered in this video. First, we will discuss different performance testing types and then we will understand the factors to choose the right type of test. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into this video. Let's begin the performance testing types topic. Before discussing this any further, let's quickly recap the performance testing definition. It is a type of non-functional testing that focuses on evaluating the speed, stability and scalability of a software application or system under various conditions in a production like environment. So performance testing mainly focuses on evaluating the speed, stability and scalability factors. It will evaluate the factors with the help of different performance test executions. That means we need to execute different performance tests to understand the speed, stability and scalability factors of the application. In functional testing, the application functionality will be verified by a small number of functional testers. If functionality is not working for one person, obviously it won't work for another person as well, isn't it? That means functional issues can be identified by one person. However, most of the performance issues do not show up with one user accessing the application because the application behaves differently when one person is using the application versus thousand users. To identify application performance issues, we need to test with hundreds or thousands of users. But is it possible to conduct the test with hundreds or thousands of real users let's check it out for example to test the application with thousands of users the company needs to hire those many resources right they need to have a big office to accommodate those many people they also need to provide office equipment like laptops to those thousand users all these tasks cost a lot of money to the company and no company is ready to bear those many expenses another big challenge is that if they find some issue it is not possible to reproduce the same issue again and also difficult to get the metrics like user response times and throughput etc to overcome all these challenges, companies will use performance testing tools that can virtually create the required number of users and test all the use cases to understand the performance aspects of the application. These users are referred to as virtual users as they are not real. The tools will generate or create those many users based on the requirements. Since they are virtual and not real, someone needs to clearly instruct the activities that they need to do in the application. So performance testers will develop the instructions in the form of a script and hand it over to the virtual user. So the virtual user will continuously follow the instructions. The performance testing tool will take care of the results correlation and provide the required metrics from the test. In any performance testing type, the main two factors that will differentiate each test type is number of virtual users and the test duration. There are some other factors as well. However, these two factors are crucial. During the requirements gathering, we will gather the concurrency requirements. In other words, we will gather the number of users who need to be active and do some activities in the application. In functional testing, the testers will test each functionality in a sequential manner. That means they will test functional A first and then functional B and so on. However, in performance testing, our objective is to identify the application performance factors like speed, stability and scalability when thousands of users are actively using the application. Here not thousands of users will do the same functionality at the same time. So some may be working on functionality A and some may be working on functionality B. For our discussion's sake, let's assume that we need to test account summary, transfer funds and bill payments use cases as part of performance testing. During the requirement gathering, we understand that during busy hours, 200 users are using the account summary thousands times, 100 users are using transfer funds 300 times, and 100 users are using bill payments 250 times. That means in a given busy hour, there are 400 users are active in the system and doing different things. So we need to test our application with 400 users. We also refer to these 400 users as the peak user load. Let's quickly understand the application traffic pattern on any given day. Here x axis represents the duration. Let's assume that the data is captured for 24 hours. The y axis represents the number of users active in the system. As the day progresses, the users will slowly start using the application. Here important thing that we should understand, not all users are using the application from the beginning of the day. That means maybe 10 users started at 6 am and another 10 users joined at 8 am and then 100 users joined at 8 30 am and so on. After some point, the number of users line becomes somewhat flat and we did not see any increase. Again at the end of the day, users are exiting gradually from the application. We can see a similar pattern for most of the web applications. Next, we will discuss three important phases that will be used during the performance test scenario design. Ramp up. It is a gradual increase in the number of virtual users over a specified period. The main purpose of ramp up is to simulate a realistic scenario where the user load on the system gradually increases in the beginning of the day. In performance testing, we should try to simulate realistic user behavior as closely as possible. It should prevent overwhelming the system with a sudden increase in users which could lead to inaccurate test results. Next one, steady state. It is the phase in a performance test where the system operates under a constant 
consistent and consistent load. Once the test reaches to steady state, there will not be any additional users added to the test. The total number of virtual users till the point will continue to run the test for an extended period of time based on the type of the test. This is the crucial phase in the test where all the performance metrics such as response times, throughput and error rates are closely monitored. The results from this phase will be compared against baseline or SLEs to understand the deviations. The final phase is ramp down. It is a gradual decrease in the number of virtual users over a specified period following the steady state phase. The main purpose of ramp down is to simulate a realistic scenario where the user load on the system decreases gradually, eventually reaching to zero. It is typically employed at the end of the performance test to gracefully conclude the test. It allows the system to return to normal operation levels without any sudden disruptions. Now let's look at different types of performance tests. We have different types of performance tests. Some of them are listed here. Sanity or dry run, load test, endurance test. This is also referred to as soak test and then stress test, spike test, scalability test and volume test. These are the commonly executed tests in the performance testing projects. Based on the performance objective, we will plan different types of test runs. For each type of test, we need to understand the objective and the things that we need to be focused on. This way, we can determine the type of test that is relevant to the project. The first one on our list is sanity or dry run. This is the first test that every performance tester should execute irrespective of the scope or the objective. The main objective of the test is to validate the readiness of the test scripts, data and the environment. In general, the script and the data may work with a single user. However, when we execute with multiple users, we may notice some issues. With this test, we can ensure that scripts and data are working as expected. In some situations, we may notice some environmental issues like configuration issues, etc. This test also helps us to understand if we have such environmental issues. During the test execution, we need to identify the issues related to scripts, data and the environment. In general, this test will be executed with 10% of peak load with a duration of 15 to 30 minutes of the steady state. We should plan for some additional time to ramp up and ramp down. This type of ramp up and ramp down planning is applicable for all the test execution. For example, let's assume that ramp up is 5 minutes and ramp down is 5 minutes. So the total duration would be 5 minutes of ramp up plus 15 minutes of steady state and 5 minutes of ramp down that is total 25 minutes. If we represent this in a graph, it should look like this. Here RU means ramp up, SS means steady state and RD means ramp down. Now let's look at the second test on our list, load test. Some people will also call it as peak load test. After the sanity or dry run, we will schedule this test in every project and it is a kind of mandatory test. The objective of the test is to validate the systems or application behavior under a specific load. During the test, we will focus on the application response time, throughput rates and resource utilization of the server. If we have a severe deviation from the performance testing requirements, then the test will be stopped and the teams will will investigate the root cause. Once the issue has been identified or fixed, a re-attempt will be made. In general, we will execute two rounds of tests with the same volumes or user load to understand the consistency. This test will be executed with 100% of peak load. However, if the test is for a brand new application, it is recommended to start the test with incremental load instead of targeting direct 100% peak load. This way, we can understand the system's behavior under different user load levels. It is a best practice to conduct this type of test for two hours steady state. Some people will execute it for one hour as well. So we should understand the application traffic pattern and plan the ramp up and ramp down durations accordingly. Again, if we represent this design in a graph, it should look like this. Here as well, RU means ramp up, SS means steady state and RD means ramp down. The next important test type is the endurance test. This is also referred to as the soak test. It is a mandatory test for every performance testing project or release. The main objective of the test is to determine the system's performance over an extended period. Unlike other performance test runs, this test will be executed for a longer duration to understand the issues related to the application stability. In this test, we will focus on identifying the memory related issues like memory leaks and any gradual performance degradation issues. Some applications may work very well for the first couple of hours. However, due to poor performance management, they may be noticing performance degradations over time. So this test will help us to identify such issues in the application. A memory leak is a type of software issue where a computer program fails to release the memory that is acquired but no longer needs. In other words, the program continues to allocate memory without freeing up memory that is no longer in use. Because of memory leaks, we may notice degraded performance, system crashes and negative user experience. In the application logs, we will see out of memory exceptions whenever there is a memory leak in the application. In general, this test will be executed with 70% of the peak load or average user load of the application. This test will be scheduled for 8 to 12 hours of steady state. However, duration may change based on the application traffic pattern. Some applications may operate 8 hours and some may be 24 hours. Based on the application usage, we have to decide the duration. Same as other tests, we will have a ramp up and ramp down for this test. If we represent this design in a graph, it will look like this. 
case. If time permits, I will have a separate video on memory leak issue and it is one of the common interview questions in the performance testing interviews. In interviews, we will have a couple of questions from this test type like why do we do endurance or soak test? Uh, what is the purpose of the endurance test? How long will we execute the test? How will we decide the duration of the test? And what is the memory leak? Or what kind of exceptions will we get when the problem happens? So these type of questions may be asked in the interviews. The next test on our list is stress test. This is an optional test and in general it will be planned for new application testing or during system software or hardware upgrades. In this test we will create some kind of stress situation on the application and evaluate its performance. We will push the user load beyond its normal operational capacity. This test will be scheduled to understand the application or system breakpoints and also to understand how the system fails and how it recovers after failures. When the application is upgraded from old hardware or new hardware or from the old version of software to the new version, this test will be scheduled to understand the breaking point. This will help the teams to understand how much load that system can handle and when they need to plan for additional capacity. As I said, this test will be scheduled for beyond 100% peak load. Before executing the test, we should ensure that 100% load test results are within the acceptable limits. Determining the breakpoint is a complex effort often viewed as an infinite variable. Some individuals opt for stress testing at levels significantly higher than peak such as 400% or 500% of the expected load. So this test will be scheduled for more than 2 hours. During this test, we incrementally raise the load maintaining a steady state for 15 minutes. This cycle will continue until pinpoint the breakpoint of the application. If we represent this design in a graph, it will look like this. Once we identify the breakpoint or reach the targeted maximum load, the test will be stopped. Here, the system breakpoint means it is a point where all the metrics are not within acceptable limits, often leading to request failures. The next one on our list is spike test. This is also an optional test and it will be scheduled or planned based on the specific requirements. Some of the applications may experience sudden spikes during busy hours like the users may jump from 100 to 1000. There could be several reasons for this behavior. So this test validates the system's ability to handle such spikes in the application. With the help of this test, we will try to understand how the system behaves during the sudden spikes. For example, is there any change in the application performance during the spiky period, etc. We will test this with 100% peak load. In the middle of the test, we will introduce the sudden spikes to understand the application behavior. This test will be scheduled for 1 to 2 hours of steady state duration. Like other tests, we will have ramp up and ramp down parts for this test as well. If we represent the design in the graph, it looks like this. During the workload model, if we observe the application has a spiky behavior, then we will plan for this test. The next one on our list is the scalability test. Let's look at the objective of the test. Every application typically has future expectation, right? For instance, there might be an annual expectation of a 10% increase in user load. So the application teams would like to understand if the existing capacity is able to handle the future projections. Sometimes they will also add additional capacity to assess future projections. In certain scenarios, a significant portion of the existing capacity remains unused. During such time, the capacity might be reduced and the application performance validated accordingly. In the test execution, we need to focus on application performance while adding or removing the capacity. For instance, is it working as per the expectations? Are we seeing any capacity issues? Those kind of factors will be evaluated. Okay. The anticipated user load is determined according to the future projections. For example, every year if the application has a 10% increase in the user load, then the scalability test will be scheduled for the next 5 years volumes like 110%, 120%, 130%, 140% and 150% etc. This test will also be scheduled for 1 to 2 hours of steady state duration. And again ramp up and ramp down factors will also be determined based on the application application traffic patterns. If we design this test in a graph, it will look like this. So scaling can be achieved through two methods, horizontal scaling and vertical scaling. In horizontal scaling, the additional machines or servers will be added to the existing infrastructure. This is also referred to as scaling out. In vertical scaling, they will add additional capacity like CPU, RAM, etc. to the existing server. This is also called scaling up. During the interviews, you might be asked to explain the concept of horizontal scaling or vertical scaling. The final one on our list is the volume test. This is an optional test and again based on the requirement the test will be scheduled. The main purpose of the test is to understand the application or system's performance under a large volume of data. There are situations where new applications are migrated to the existing system. During such migrations, the existing database must accommodate the added data volumes. Another example, when the customer base increases, obviously the data volumes may also be increased. In those types of scenarios, we need to schedule that volume test to understand the database performance with the additional volumes. For example, is the existing data database able to manage the volumes without any performance degradations or are there any queries consuming more time for processing etc. This test will be planned with a 100% peak load with the additional database volumes to validate the impact. The steady state phase will last 1 to 2 hours with ramp up and ramp down during
configuration preceding and following the steady state. If we represent the design in a graph, it will look like this. So these are commonly used performance test types. Please feel free to mention it in the comment section if any test type is not clear to you. Next, we will try to understand the concept of baseline test and benchmark test. This is one of the commonly asked interview questions. To understand the concept, let's take cricket as an example. Let's look at the stats of the fastest 50 runs scored in one day international. So far, AB De Villiers scored 50 runs in just 16 balls. Until today, this is the fastest 50 record. So, he sets a benchmark for the rest of the batsmen in the world. If anyone breaks this record, then that would be the new benchmark for the fastest 50. So far, our Indian batsman Virat Kohli scored 50 runs in 27 balls. So, this can be considered Kohli's baseline. Tomorrow, if Kohli scored 50 in just 25 balls, then that would be his new baseline. In the future, the fastest self records will be compared against the new self baseline. I hope you understand the concept here. Likewise, the benchmark represents industry standards or the performance of competitors applications. Benchmark results allow us to assess how our applications performance aligns with the industry standards or competitors in the market. Whereas the baseline is standard provided for future comparisons within the same system. We will conduct some tests and utilize the results as a reference point for future comparisons. You may be wondering under what circumstances this baseline test will be conducted, right? Baseline tests are conducted when there are no defined SLEs from client stakeholders. Additionally, in scenarios such as software or hardware version upgrades, baseline tests are executed for comparative analysis. As part of the baseline test, there is no need to introduce new factors. It is basically a 100% peak load test with the existing system state under standard operating conditions. Up to this point, we have discussed various kinds of performance tests. So, how to choose or recommend the right type of test for the project? This is a common query among many performance testers. So, let's dive into this aspect. First of all, it is not mandatory to conduct all the test types in every project. Therefore, it is crucial to understand the performance goals or objectives of the application or project and recommend the necessary test types accordingly. We need to ensure that all the suggested test types are documented in our test plan or strategy document. We should avoid making scope changes in later phases like test design or execution. So, you might be curious about the specific order for executing the performance test, isn't it? So, let's explore that. After developing the test scripts, we will conduct a sanity or dry run first. Following that, there will be two rounds of tests at 100% peak load along with an endurance or soak test. All other tests are optional and can be scheduled based on the project requirements. It is not necessary that all optional tests should be executed in this order. Once mandatory tests are completed, the optional tests can be scheduled in any sequence. It is important that we should validate all the objectives of the test and ensure that they are met. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you understood all the concept in this video. In case any specific concept is not clear or requires more detailed information, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I will see you with the next video in our module number 4. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.